mentioned earlier in our intro, we're going to be talking about the uh, Industrial Modernization Center or the IMC. And the IMC has organized an exhibition, a major exhibition. Uh, the exhibition was titled, entitled The Creative Egypt and we're delighted to be joined today by Engineer Ahmad Taha, IMC Executive Director. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Engineer Good morning. Uh, Taha. And first of all, if you could uh, shed some light on the IMC and especially on your booth uh, that you are participating in that uh, uh, huge exhibition. How did the idea spark to you and how are you participating in IMC? Good. Uh, actually, the IMC was uh, initiated as a joint uh, uh, funding program between the EU and the government of Egypt. Mm. Uh, the House of Parliament approved uh, the agreement in 1999. Uh, afterwards, uh, in year 2000, there was a presidential decree of the establishment of the IMC to uh, be able to execute the industrial modernization program because it was a huge program with a funding of 462 uh, million uh, euros, uh, 250 of which is a fund from the EU and the rest is uh, jointly between the government of Egypt and uh, the subsidy of the different industrial sectors that are working with uh, IMC. <clears throat> we started the actual operation in year 2002 due to uh, many uh, shortfalls at the very beginning, the usual. Uh, afterwards, uh, we have uh, started serving the small and medium enterprises as per our establishment decree. Uh, the services uh, was revolving around uh, upgrading their skills, upgrading uh, the quality, uh, quality certification, and so on and so forth. Uh, until uh, the year 2005, there was a major change in the management style. Uh, the management at that time decided to work extensively with the large companies because uh, their views, which was right or wrong, this is not for me to judge actually, mm. uh, that was uh, taken into consideration that these large companies are the main drivers for uh, exports and there was a lot of support given to uh, this kind of uh, large companies uh, until uh, January 25th, 2011. Uh, things was a little bit on hold. Uh, as many other uh, economic uh, sectors here in Egypt. And uh, when I came into the office in August 2013, we had to stop and assess uh, everything that we've done over the uh, previous 11 years, from 2002 until 2013. Uh, and accordingly, we've decided to do an active role in the area of development, not just looking at the growth rate and uh, the increase in exports, uh, and, and that's it because uh, the people walking in the street do not feel it. So we started working uh, extensively in uh, the development uh, sector, specifically the handicrafts and uh, the artisan. Accordingly, we have done a map. There was a lot of effort done before that uh, to map uh, villages and cities and craftsmen. Uh, we have identified 61 different clusters whether they are ethnic or handicrafts or uh, industrial clusters. Uh, in the uh, fair that we are talking about today, we have managed to uh, have 41 of these clusters displaying in our uh, The main objective of identifying them is looking into the economic side. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, if I am a craftsman and I earn some money, accordingly I'll be able to buy goods for my family and for my kids, and so on and so forth. Mm. <clears throat> we have targeted 41 clusters in the uh, exhibition, presenting 17 different government rates, and uh, direct and indirect uh, beneficiaries out of it was almost 7,000 families. So it was a huge effort, I believe. It took us almost uh, a year to uh, organize, to think about it, to identify which products to work on, the redesigning and the quality of the handicraft products, and six continuous months to plan and to do actual work on ground until we've seen, in my views, and I believe most of the people who visited us that exceeded almost 25,000, 30,000 visitors over four days, 
have seen something uh, amazing. And uh, the good thing about uh, our team in the IMC that they do walk their dreams. So we had a very nice dream, mm -hmm. ended with a fantastic result, alhamdulillah. Right, yeah. sir, uh, these traditional uh, crafts, uh, I think they are very old uh, types of uh, crafts. Uh, how do you choose the, the designs? Uh, uh, who is responsible for choosing the participants? Uh, who are the participants of uh, this exhibition? Actually, we have uh, a very uh, well-trained uh, and uh, developed team. This team is capable of uh, identifying, first of all, or mapping the clusters followed by the identification of different products, assessing these kind of products, identify what needs to be uh, done in areas related to design, in areas related to quality, even training, mm -hmm. because some of these uh, participants in the fair or in the clusters in general do not know how to price their products. So right. we had to work very extensively with them in the area of uh, costing and pricing and calculating the raw material and even the uh, time spent in uh, the production of these products, they had to calculate it and transform it into minutes and hours. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, we can have a final cost, right. and then they would put their profit margin into it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the, the, the items were either underpriced or overpriced, not the correct <laughs> pricing, accordingly, they had never been sold. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, in this uh, exhibition, I was dreaming of selling something between 200 to 300,000 Egyptian pounds during the three or uh, four days of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. uh, alhamdulillah, we sold something like 1.5 million direct sales, cash. Right. And uh, they have contracts of 4.4 million Egyptian pounds during the four uh, days fair. Right, sir. But uh, uh, I would like to know how do you export these uh, products? Do you have a plan to export these products? Well, uh, as I said earlier, we had a dream to participate into this fair. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, uh, we are currently assessing the participation of other international fairs. For example, there is a huge fair known as uh, Berlin Bazaar. The uh, executive director of this bazaar came at her own cost to visit us in uh, the fair, in uh, the exhibition, Creative Egypt, and started even selecting the items that we need to display in the bazaar in November 2015, inshallah. And uh, she was amazed by the level of uh, products, the variety of the products, because we had something like 26 different line of products. Right. Between pottery to uh, glass to uh, wood, everything, alhamdulillah, was under one roof for a change. To the extent that some of the uh, buyers and visitors to the exhibition were asking, are you planning to have a continuous outlet? Do you have a plan to uh, outreach for different areas? Because four days were not enough to the extent that some of shelves were empty on the second day because no one believed that they will be able to sell that amount of products. Mm -hmm. But alhamdulillah, they did. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, to our knowledge that uh, Prime Minister Ibrahim Mahlab was keen on visiting and inspecting uh, the fair and uh, <coughs> he delivered a message to you people, you and other people who are participating, if you can elaborate on that. And focused, he focused on the importance of that particular type of art and profession, the, 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 the crafts. Uh, so if you could elaborate on that and uh, shed some light on uh, the, the message that was delivered by the Prime Minister to you people to be able to, uh, um, let's say, extend or expand the path for you to be able to be more creative in the near future, up in November, when you hold the other uh, Actually, exhibition. as I said, the, the uh, exhibition was uh, between the 5th and 8th of uh, February. Mm -hmm. uh, this month. Uh, over the four days, uh, His Excellency Minister Munir visited us three times. And each time he had a different minister with him. In the opening, he had the Minister of uh, Social Solidarity. Saturday, he had the Minister of Finance. And finally, he got us, uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister, uh, Engineer Ibrahim Mahlab, who was uh, amazed by the level of the products. And he said, a very clear comment at the very beginning. I would have regretted if I never came today. In my views, this is a very strong message that we've done our role. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And the people who were uh, displaying their products were very proud and very happy to see that uh, the highest level in the government is really valuing them mm -hmm. and really appreciates the effort they have been doing over the years. Uh, knowing that, he gave us clear instructions, which he gave me personally before during his visit to something similar to uh, in Suhag on 4th of December 2014. First of all, he uh, encouraged us to participate in different international fairs, so uh, hopefully we'll be participating in Maison Objet in uh, Paris uh, in September, uh, the Bazaar in uh, November, inshallah, in Berlin. Uh, and meanwhile, he started to encourage us to open uh, outlets. Mm, right. uh, we are currently registering the name of Creative Egypt Masr al Ibda to be our brand for these kind of products. So any outlet will have that brand, that logo displayed in front of it. We are talking now with uh, a major uh, mall chain uh, located uh, in Cairo uh, to have a small outlet just to display uh, not only B2B but B2C as well, mm -hmm. followed by uh, a mega store that will be uh, given to the IMC through a contract with the Ministry of Investment, uh, inshallah, very soon. So uh, we can display not only small items of the handicrafts, but we can even uh, display uh, uh, silk carpets made in Sa'id Abu Shara and uh, wood fin and furniture. Uh, manufactured in uh, Domiata, as well as marble and granite uh, done in El Dresa, yeah. uh, near Alexandria and Sha'at Taban uh, near Helwan. Mm -hmm. Right, so we understand also that uh, uh, Prime Minister Ibrahim Mahlab, as you just said, sir, uh, he will uh, give the IMC a mega store or uh, one of the big department stores, uh, the downtown branch, to uh, exhibit uh, all its products. Uh, how do you see this uh, decision as encouraging to the participants uh, of the exhibition? If you would allow me, I would say uh, the participants are flying above the sky. They have never ever imagined that this exhibition, four days exhibition, will have such a huge impact. Mm -hmm. but fortunately, alhamdulillah, it was amazing mm -hmm. impact. Right. Uh, and I have to thank our supporters as well, the, the Chamber mm -hmm. of uh, Woodworking and Furniture and the Export Council plus the main organizers of the exhibition in all. Mm -hmm. They supported us, uh, they even uh, gave us a space that we needed at a subsidized rate as much as they can. And I have always, uh, also to uh, thank the designer of the booth because he gave us an excellent theme of the Nubian village all over uh, this 1,600 meters. And uh, one of the things I'm actually proud of that we uh, had 11 uh, young entrepreneurs displaying within our area as well. And these young entrepreneurs are working in different uh, items, different products. And fortunately, uh, they had uh, lots of orders uh, as well as the other displays and other uh, buyers. Right, if you could excuse me, there is uh, now uh, some footage of uh, the, uh, the exhibition, exhibition right? the fair, yeah. and uh, the um, setting that you were talking about, the decoration, the interior design. Actually, interior. this is the area of the uh, pottery and glass because we had uh, the, the whole theme of uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. So the first zone uh, was uh, focusing on pottery and, and the glass. The second zone was on uh, textile and carpets, and the final zone was uh, focusing on newcomers like Halaib, Shalatin, uh, Siwa. They were mm -hmm. displaying along with uh, the others. And what makes me proud, actually, they had uh, excellent sales as well, because yeah, they were a bit right. worried that they will not benefit mm -hmm. out of it. And right. These uh, these uh, uh, products are very uh, attractive to uh, not only Egyptians but also foreigners, uh, <coughs> maybe foreigners even living in Egypt. So, uh, would you tell me, sir, how do you promote this among foreigners living in Egypt? This is why I actually started uh, by thanking again the Chamber of uh, Woodworking and Furniture as well as the Export Council, because they have invited uh, uh, 300 international buyers coming from 42 different countries. Right. Uh, some of these buyers had to extend their stay 
uh, even beyond uh, the duration of the exhibition to be able to visit uh, different workshops and uh, different clusters. Mm -hmm. right. And the news that I received actually uh, earlier today uh, that they already uh, benefited out of it, there is some contracts being discussed now between uh, a Russian buyer uh, and the uh, workshops in Damietta for the furniture. Mm -hmm. Right, we've all seen uh, China uh, lead the whole world, is taking the lead now um, ec economically uh, out of uh, sometimes handicrafts and uh, you know the, the small and medium enterprises and uh, uh, that kind of industries that never crossed the mind of anyone all over the world. Now they're, I mean, leading the world economically. So um, do you see any potentials in uh, uh, taking the lead in that particular uh, um, uh, profession, which is the handicraft, to be able to upgrade the Egyptian economy uh, in the coming three years? I mean, do you, what role would you be playing, you people, to be able to share economically First the economic all, scene? First of all, we have to look into uh, bringing the awareness of the world that we have these kind of products. Mm -hmm. This is going to be done through multiple steps, one of which is uh, the exhibition that we've just done. Uh, the second two steps will be international uh, exhibitions uh, in Europe and different other parts of the world. This is our first part of the formula. The second part is a proposal that we've done to uh, the Prime Minister that uh, the giveaways that will be given uh, during the economic conference why instead of uh, giving a, a USB that's made in China or something Chinese, give them of some of these products? Mm. To remember that this is Egypt. We have uh, very uh, talented craftsmen and women that they are capable of uh, delivering uh, excellent quality products for people uh, attending the economic conference to take home. Mm. Uh, plus, we have asked him as well, and he's currently with his uh, team and in the government uh, studying the option to have a small exhibition uh, along the side of the uh, economic forum. Uh, even two, three, four hundred meters would do because we don't want to limit uh, the uh, giveaways to something like seven, eight, nine items. We want to expand the whole cycle to uh, be able for, to give the chance for the people attending to buy even uh, these small items. Because if we have the exhibition uh, along the side of the fair, uh, the uh, conference, uh, we have to be very uh, selective uh, in the size of the items and as well as the weight of the items just to avoid uh, giving the people a hard time on taking these items back to their homes. Right, sir. Uh, referring to what you've just said, uh, when, when we see Egypt depending primarily on its uh, own production and uh, not importing uh, very simple things like we've seen uh, Fanus Ramadan being imported, when will uh, Egypt, as um, you as the IMC director, when will we see Egypt depending primarily on its uh, own uh, production and uh, manufacturing? If you would ask me this question on the 4th of February, I would be a bit hesitant to give you a clear-cut answer. But now I can give you a clearer answer, uh, to be exact. If we continue working as we are now, with the government support, which is highly needed from uh, the IMC towards uh, their beneficiaries from the handicraftsmen and women, I believe in two to three years, we would see something totally different. Again, it's all about bringing the awareness and the attention of the world that we have these kind of products Nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. mm, right. Um, uh, sir, also, uh, while, while we are talking about handicrafts, which is uh, the, uh, a profession that has been there for almost maybe 7,000 years and has evolved over uh, the ages, uh, what are the challenges do you see that have come over your way as people who are trying to take a leap in that particular uh, field uh, something that had been taken years and years before, but now you cannot affect it. What are the challenges that are meeting you and you would like to overcome it? The challenges that we need to overcome is uh, basically financing them mm -hmm. because uh, they need some working capital to work onto it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, to buy raw materials. These are, we're talking about amateurs? I mean, people who are we not are professionals? We are talking about individuals. Individuals? These individuals need and to And they're have, showcasing their products? They are showcasing these products, whether in uh, the bazaars, in the touristic areas, which is uh, having very uh, difficult time nowadays since uh, January two thousand, uh, 2011. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, uh, they need this kind of financing after they have seen that there is potential and there is orders, because some of them uh, got uh, orders for 200 and 250,000 Egyptian pounds, but they cannot satisfy these orders because they do not have enough money uh, to buy the... Uh, Actually, these the are uh, some capital. of the yeah. products that yeah. were presented at the uh, uh, fair. Right. Yeah, this is a ceramics. Yeah. Actually, it's done in uh, Masr al Adima. Mm -hmm. These uh, are and pyramids? at the back is the pottery done in uh, Tunis village in Fayoum. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, and the one to the right, this one, uh, the brownish one, is from El Wadi Grid, the New Valley. Again, it's pottery. But uh, the good thing about this product that it is uniquely linked to the government rate it's made at. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people is already uh, giving these... Uh, uh, trades and these uh, professions to other youngsters. They're exhibiting so their culture and the product. Indeed, but indeed. each product is representing uh, the, uh, this is uh, His Excellency uh, Minister uh, Munir Fakhri Abdunur also inspecting the, uh, the fair. But each product is exhibiting, is, is representing, I mean, I'm the sorry, culture. representing it, the, culture the culture of the government. Of the area. Of the area. Yes, indeed. That's excellent. Yes. And we have to uh, take into consideration as well that the ethnic flavor of these products, mm. uh, the history behind the product, because we have agreed in the IMC and we've agreed with our exhibitors that we are not exhibiting a product. Mm. We are exhibiting a story behind the product. So mm. each of these products got a little label telling the story of this. So Where are was we reviving it our old uh, products, our old traditions through these products? Are we reviving the old mushroom? Yes, we are. And yes, we are. Right. Yes, we are. Right. Uh, so how do you see the importance of the upcoming economic summit uh, for uh, the ex exhibiting these products and for the work of the IMC in general? It is a straight uh, link to uh, what I was saying a minute ago, bringing the awareness of people participating in the economic forum, mm -hmm. that there is a kind uh, of excellent craftsmen and women in Egypt that they are capable of producing these items. And these items, the beauty of it, it's not only for decoration. You can actually use it for lighting like uh, lamps and, right. and uh, side right. table lamps. Right. You can use it yes, for food the on the pottery. pottery. For the pottery, you can actually use it for uh, uh, presenting food or uh, just mm -hmm. for decoration, putting some uh, fruits into it. Uh, even uh, the products of the uh, wood, uh, Hegaza wood, is uh, excellent in uh, decoration as well as you can use it uh, for uh, uh, hot items to put it on the table, uh, these kind of things. So it's not only about history, it's not only about uh, products that is used for decoration, mm -hmm. it's the whole lot from home utilization all the way up to decoration. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward not to see uh, these products being uh, manufactured by other uh, countries and imported by Egypt. So this is why we are currently registering. Of, uh, uh, manufacturing everything. Uh, of our own tradition, the, the Egyptian crafts, the old Egyptian crafts. This is why we are Egyptians. currently registering our trademark or our branding, which is Creative Egypt Masr al Ibda, both mm -hmm. in Arabic and English. Uh, a lawyer is registering uh, on behalf of the IMC currently. Mm -hmm. And this logo will be stamped and will be highly protected uh, by the IMC and the government to make sure that nobody is replicating it under any condition. Yeah. Are you underway of making uh, some studies uh, while you try to uh, get in competition in the market with the Chinese products and uh, you could find the defects of uh, your competitors, like, I mean, the Chinese ones, like uh, the uh, quality, which has been a real defect in the Chinese products, and we can 
and everybody knows that it's one known that most of the Chinese products are made of the uh, leftover garbage, I mean, recycled garbage uh, uh, items, and uh, then it's made, remade again into uh, toys and could be hazardous to health. Uh, other um, household uh, utilities also are made of uh, the recycled uh, uh, elements. So um, the, the thing that might distinguish you from the Chinese products is that you have quality yes. and you're making it from organic, from where we see from the footage now, that you're using organic substance. Indeed. The pottery, I mean the household utilities. The glass and the, uh, the glass and everything. Yes. What distinguished the Egyptian products uh, is the quality. This I is mean, what we sell. Right, but years uh, and years. in addition to what Dina is saying, uh, we have a very high profit margin, I think, in Egypt. That's why people go to the Chinese products. I mean, uh, we use better, of course, uh, materials, but uh, uh, how can we uh, make a middle ground? In, this this in, is why I was saying that we have done something into the area of costing because uh, craftsmen and women are very good and capable of producing high quality items using organic uh, right. raw materials right. but they don't know how to price it either they are very highly and they overpriced don't know how to market it. marketing to we, it. we are taking care of it mm -hmm. we have teach them how to uh, price it as well to be competitive because at the end of the day if you compare apple to apple you have to be uh, having the same ground you have to make sure that uh, everything is being priced to the best and to a price that is uh, attractive to the buyers, so I can go ahead and uh, buy it. My worries uh, before uh, our exhibition uh, in February that the items will not be sold. They have been able of overcrossing my estimates by almost five times, from two to three hundred pound, uh, thousand pounds to almost 1.5 million. So you cross your edge. They have crossed my expectation. Right. Actually, because in my wildest dreams, I would have never ever imagined that we would be able not only to sell, but also to contract, to have down payments for contracts that exceeded 4.4 million Egyptian pounds. Right. Uh, I was in the middle of my question, uh, but, and I didn't con continue with it. Please do. Um, when, when we talk about the Egyptian products, we cannot deny or we cannot ignore uh, facts like uh, the, the, the the worldwide recognized designers, and of course I'm not supposed to mention names, they're using the organic cotton. And whenever you can buy the, the most expensive uh, items and outfits from uh, uh, ha fashion houses in Paris and in England and, in, uh, and everywhere in the United States, you can read it on the label that it's fabric in Egypt. The, the, the fabric, yes. the cotton and other fabrics also. Yeah. So this is one of the yeah. things that you should put in mind also while you do the handicrafts. You can compete with China, uh, but on another level. China is sweeping the market, the cheap market. But you can launch your products on a, another level, on a little bit more sophisticated, more expensive uh, market, which is in Europe which is in, uh, I mean, uh, designer uh, fashion houses, I mean, designer uh, fashion household. D did that, that type of ideas cross your minds? Well, as I said earlier, it was a dream. So the dream got uh, a link to international designers. It had a link to international stylists. Because the, as we've seen in the footage, that even the selection of the items to be put on that salt pot uh, displayed, whether it's ceramic or uh, different pottery items, it was done by international uh, uh, stylists mm -hmm. who came uh, all the way to Egypt just to put the items on the shelves, to put the item on this uh, salt box and so on and so forth. Having said that, we have always to take into consideration the uh, say that we are not selling a product, we are selling the story behind the product. Mm. Knowing that we are selling the story behind the product, we are selling high quality products. Part of this uh, high quality and the story is the organic item or the organic ingredients into uh, the products that we are selling. Why I am trying as much as possible to protect and to register our uh, Creative Egypt brand to avoid what happened to a similar brand that have costed us, as Egypt, a whole load of, of money, Egyptian cotton. And currently, if you would go anywhere in Europe uh, or even the States, you will find the Egyptian uh, cotton logo 
and at the back made in India, made in Malaysia, made in wherever, but no, never made in Egypt, mm. unfortunately. Uh, or not made That's in Egypt. That's one of the things that you should put under study. This, this is a strategy we're working on, protection, quality, selling a story, as well as opening new markets. And it's the most expensive. It is, it is. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if we do not do that, we will end up with competition, people taking our uh, products and doing something uh, similar to it, but with much lower quality. Taking into consideration the, the Chinese products, with all due respect to them, I've been to China, I've seen their uh, mozo or brandy over there, amazing one. Uh, targeting the class of C and D of the consumers. But our products are targeting A, P, C and D, because A, P would use it into the decoration, which is the pulling and the pushing strategy we're working on. Pulling a strategy from the AP segment and pushing a strategy from the uh, C and D segments of the market. Mm. I think we're going to go to a short break right now and we will continue, of course, with this very interesting item uh, or segment. So please stay with us and we'll be right back. Uh, breakfast show and we resume our discussion on the exhibition uh, organized by the IMC on the creative Egypt creative uh, work and we have on the over the line over the phone uh, Dr. Yomna al Hamei, professor of uh, political economy. Thank you for joining us. Good morning Dr. Hamei. Good morning, how are you and good morning to engineer Ahmad. Good, morning, good day to you Dr. Hamei and our uh, first question to you is that uh, uh, how do you see the role that is played by the IMC uh, in, in developing the uh, economic environment and effecting a real change in the economic roadmap that uh, Egyptians are planning to achieve? Yes, uh, actually uh, the role is vitally important uh, and I believe that Engineer Ahmed is doing quite well for the last period uh, specifically to enhance the competitiveness of our industries. Uh, it needs a lot of work uh, for this uh, matter because, uh, as you see, if you revise uh, our uh, uh, structure of experts, you can see that we are still concentrating on uh, raw materials uh, instead of having uh, competitiveness of manufactured products. What I am seeing about the role of IMC uh, that uh, uh, have taken uh, you know, uh, by uh, Engineer Ahmed uh, lately that uh, he's uh, starting uh, as uh, uh, within the strategy of uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade to enhance the competitiveness of the, some industries that may have uh, a comparative advantage like uh, furniture and uh, taking account uh, sectorally and geographically of uh, 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 some of these industries to enhance Hence, its uh, competitiveness. So this role is uh, quite important. Uh, I hope that uh, this could be translated into a better competitiveness and more uh, uh, capacity to penetrate international market as well as, uh, you know, uh, supporting the local market. Uh, but what I would like very much from Engineer uh, Ahmed uh, to, uh, to strengthen on for the coming period is that uh, we are now working uh, towards uh, attracting foreign direct investments and uh, uh, all our institutions and ministries are uh, uh, trying to, uh, to, to support uh, to how extent Egypt can offer opportunities of investment uh, with comparative advantage. So I hope that we can enhance this work relating to enhancing competitiveness of our industries like uh, ready-made clothes. We have a lot to be done for this. We have footwear and, uh, you know, all leather products and uh, food industries. All these industries, we have uh, uh, feeding industries to be introduced and to enhance its competitiveness. At the same time, I hope that we can have more uh, emphasizing on the informal sector, to how extent we can, uh, you know, uh, enhance or encourage uh, the informal sector uh, on a sectoral way 
in order to encourage them to be uh, to transfer into the formal sector. So may God help him and help all Egyptians that are working uh, quite well for our uh, future, inshallah. Hopefully that uh, this could uh, gain importance and attracting uh, small uh, uh, industries uh, and small uh, entrepreneurs because uh, I know that uh, within the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry there are several units that should coordinate with Engineer Ahmed uh, in order to enhance the competitiveness of our industries. Uh, there are a lot of markets that could be penetrated, like African market, Arab, can, uh, Arab markets, and uh, uh, I believe that uh, taking into consideration uh, uh, the potentialities of uh, export for Egypt uh, uh, is giving a lot of opportunities uh, for our industries. Right. Uh, Dr. Hamani, how do you see the importance of the upcoming economic uh, conference in uh, exporting uh, these products, in uh, finding new uh, fields for exportation? Uh, and uh, how do you see uh, the importance of the, uh, this conference in attracting uh, foreign investment to Egypt? Actually, uh, these industries uh, may have, uh, uh, you know, uh, very good pot uh, potentialities for uh, profitability, which means that uh, for, if we take an example like um, ready-made clothes, there, there is still some industries that could be feeding industries, and there is still some industries that could be enhanced if we take into consideration how to uh, enhance, uh, you know, the competitiveness regarding upgrading technology, the transfer of technology. So from foreign direct investment, what we need is the transfer of technology so that we can uh, improve our competitiveness. And I believe there is a lot uh, to be done regarding if we take it uh, sectorally, in these uh, industries, uh, there is a lot to be done uh, uh, to offer uh, all these investors uh, potentialities and uh, like uh, uh, ready packages with pre-visibility studies about the opportunities of profitability uh, for Egypt. Now we right. know that uh, Doctor, Dr. in this preparation, it right. means just to, uh, to prepare uh, our homework so that to attract the maximum of these investments. Right, Dr. Yomna al Hamai, uh, Professor of Political Economy, many thanks for your input. Right, Engineer Ahmed, we, were just, we only have two minutes to go, unfortunately. No but uh, like uh, Dr. Yomna, we were, she mentioned or she uh, just highlighted what we were talking uh, uh, back then before yeah. the uh, phone. Um, um, we were talking about like um, supporting the local market and uh, encouraging the foreign direct investment and also encouraging the ready-made uh, clothes and, uh, you know, the, the fast food, uh, I mean, market. And all these fears that if you sit down and think about it, you will have your hands full for okay. 10 years. <clears throat> if, if you will allow me, uh, what we have been talking for most of the show was in areas related to the exhibition and the handicrafts and so on and so forth. But the IMC uh, has a, a very uh, ambitious plan that we have been working on for the last year and a half now. Uh, and uh, this, this plan is focusing on uh, a number of programs. If I will quickly go through them, uh, the first one is transforming Borag al Arab city into the first green city in Egypt mm -hmm. in coordination with the Investor Association and uh, the Board of Trustees of Borg al Arab as well as uh, the Governorate of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is uh, providing and uh, facilitating access to finance for uh, different industries, and these programs are mainly focusing on SMEs, not in this uh, uh, case focusing on uh, handicrafts only. Uh, providing technical assistance to SMEs in areas related to production, facilitation, uh, exporting, marketing, and so on and so forth. Uh, a fourth program related to uh, the uh, area of cost optimization uh, through uh, looking at different uh, items and different uh, inputs of different costs of the products just to work on to minimizing that. And most importantly is the uh, value chain program mm -hmm. where we study the different uh, chain of a different product, specifically in four main sectors, 
plastic, ready-made garments, uh, leather, and engineering exclusively in the white goods, identifying what are the components going into it. So we identify the feeding industry, identify which items are being imported from all over the world, not manufactured here in Egypt, equals getting investment opportunities to uh, establish and to start uh, investing into these feeding industries. So this is all the IMC with a main focus now for the development, including the handicrafts and the small uh, craftsmen and women. Right, and Shinir Ahmed Taha, the IMC Executive Director, would like to thank you very much and wish Pleasure. you all the best of luck in your endeavors. Pleasure. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir, thank for you coming. Thank you. And with this, we come to the end of our breakfast show for today. Thank you, Gina, for being with me today. And tomorrow, another day, another crew, and a new episode.